As Egypt plans to abrogate her treaty with Britain, attention focuses on the Great Suez Canal. Built by the Frenchman de Lesseps just over 80 years ago, the 100 miles canal, which halves the distance between Europe and the East, is guarded by British troops under the treaty which Egypt now plans to set aside. King Farouk's government has denounced this and the Sudan Treaty. Yet, it was the present Premier, Nahas Pasha, who in 1936 signed the treaty when Mr. Eden was Foreign Secretary with the late Ramsay MacDonald watching. The treaty gave Egypt complete independence and Britain the defence of the Canal Zone. During the war, Britain took over the defence of all Egypt, but handed over once again when war ended, and Egypt smiled as she took over and forgot Alamein. To Egypt, Britain brought prosperity. Once her dry lands gave plenty, only when the Nile flooded. We harnessed the Nile with one of the world's greatest dams, and thereafter, there was always water to irrigate the fields in rain or drought. Water for the peasant to draw with his primitive wheels. With water in plenty, vast cotton plantations sprung up in Upper Egypt and the Sudan to the south. Cotton, without which many mills of Lancashire would close down. Connecting the Mediterranean with the Red Sea, the Suez Canal, in the safeguard of British troops, is vital to Western security. Through its waters, our ships can race to danger points, east or west, to guard Egypt as well as the Western nations. Now Arab states, linked with her through the Arab League, promise Egypt their support, and Iraq asks speedy revision of our treaty with her. This great unrest comes just as the powers are tackling Middle East defense. General Bradley, American Chief of Staff, seen here with Monty, was on his way to Turkey, latest member of Western Defense. Egypt is next on the list, and therein lies our hope for a friendly settlement. 